Hello all. Today I will discuss DC load line and Q point of a bipolar junction transistor. Till now we have already discussed different transistor configurations, common emitter, common base in the common collector and the input and output characteristics. So to discuss the DC load line I have take, uh, taken here an example of the common emitter configuration. I have used here two biasing voltages VBB and the VCC. Depending upon the polarities of these and the magnitude of these two voltages we can have different regions of operation. If you look at the output characteristics curve of the common emitter transistor, we can have a cutoff region. This region is obtained when our base emitter or the input junction is reverse biased. In this region, no current flows or very small amount of current flows through it. That is due to the leakage current. Second is the saturation region when our both emit base emitter junction that is input junction and the collector emitter that is output junction are forward biased then our transistor works in the IC in, in the saturation region. In the saturation region IC is independent of the value of IB and beta or we can say that the formula IC is equal to beta IB is not applicable in the saturation region. Now these two cutoff region in the saturation regions are used when we use transistor as in a switch means when the transistor is in the cutoff region it is the off state of that trans of that switch and when we use it in the saturation region it is the on state. Third important region of operation is the active region when the base emitter or the input junction is forward biased and collector emitter that is the output junction is reverse biased then transistor works in the active region. Here the formula of IC is equal to beta IB is applicable. Also here the VBE is less than VCE and it is less than VCC. This region is important because this in this region the amplification takes place. Fourth one is the breakdown region. If we increase the VCE and IC after certain limit our transistor gets breakdown. Now to obtain the DC load line let's apply KVL at the input and the output. Here this is the voltage VBB and the current is entering at this terminal so this is positive the other is negative. And similarly, in the output section, the current is entering or at this point, so this is positive and this is negative. So my equations will be VBB minus IB into RB minus of VBE is equal to 0 at the input side. And the output I have VCC minus RC into IC minus VC equal to 0. So At the input I have got VBB minus RB into IB minus VBE is equal to 0. From here I can derive the value of IB it will come out to be VBB minus VBE divided by RB. Let this be equation number 1. Similarly from the output KVL I can get the value of IC is equal to VCC minus VCE upon RC. Or I can rewrite it as minus of VCE divided by RC plus VCC by RC or it is equal to minus of 1 by RC the coefficient of VCE plus VCC by RC. And if I look at this equation is it similar to Y is equal to MX plus C where Y is nothing but the IC and X is nothing but the VCE. M is the slope. Slope over here is 1 minus 1 by RC. So this slope or it is decreasing at a rate of minus 1 by RC and there is a constant C at the Y axis that is equal to VCC upon RC. So this is the DC load line that I have obtained. Now if I combine my this load line and the previous characteristics curve of common emitter then I will get my characteristics like this. Where this is the DC load line and uh, with the blue pen there is the characteristics of common emitter. Now depending upon the value of the base current IB equal to 0, IB1, IB2 I have used here IB1 equal to 200 micron per IB2 is 300. Depending upon these I can have different values of the operating point. Now IB can be obtained through my equation or the, or the KVL equation at the input that is IB is equal to VBB minus VBE upon RB. Now again here VBE is fixed it is the voltage across base emitter terminals. So this is fixed VBE. RB is also fixed it is a resistor so by using the different values of VBB I can have different values of IB. So these different values of IB will be obtained and wherever it cuts the load line that will give me the Q point. So the DC load line is nothing but a straight line drawn on the characteristics curve with two points A and B 
A at the IC and B at the VCE. Also, it is used to fix the operating point of a transistor. That is the Q point. Also called as the Q send point. Now, what is the importance of this Q point? So you can see here one is the cutoff and other is the saturation point. So if my Q point is below this cutoff point, then my transistor will be in the cutoff region. And if it is above the saturation point, then my transistor will be in the saturation region. Now, to make my transistor work as an amplifier, it is important or it is necessary that my Q point must lie between the saturation and the cutoff points. Now, the next is the selection of the operating point for AC input signal. Now, my Q point can be anywhere on this DC load line between the saturation and the cutoff. So, what is the impact if I choose my Q point nearer to the saturation region or if I choose my Q point nearer to the cutoff region? So, now how we can choose? Let me remind you, we can choose the Q point by taking different values or by using different values of VBB. From our previous equation, I have already told you that IB can be selected by the different values of VBB. And what is VBB? VBB is nothing but the biasing voltage at the input terminal. So, by using different values of VBB, we can have different values of IB. By using different values of IB, we can have different values of Q point. Over here, if my IB1 is or IB is 200 microampere, my Q point will be Q1. If it is 300 microampere, my Q point will be Q2. And if it is less than 200 microampere, it, my Q point will be Q3. So now, let's discuss first my Q point nearer to the saturation region. So, in this diagram, I have chosen my Q point P, which is nearer to my saturation region. So, when I apply an AC input signal for the amplification, I will find at the output that my positive peak is clipped or the upper part of the my positive phase is not available. So, why it is happening? If you look at this graph, the upper limit for this region is this one and the lower limit is this one. So it means any signal applied between this will be available at the output in the amplified form, but any signal above this or below this will not be available output. Now next is the nearer to the cutoff region. So in the second diagram, we have a Q point nearer to the cutoff point or nearer to the cutoff region. So in this we can see that now we can choose a large amplitude at the positive part but the inverting or the negative part is limited by this width, by this width. It means if we apply a signal greater than of this amplitude then that part will be clipped. So you can see that this part will be clipped at the output of my amplifier. So it means for the amplification I want my P to be in between this active region somewhere over here so that I will get equal magnitudes for both positive and negative and so that I can apply the higher signal at the input and no clipping will be there in the output. So as in this case, if I choose my Q point at the center of the active region, then if I apply an input signal, then no part of it will be clipped at the output. Now, even if I apply a signal higher than this value, for example, if I apply a signal higher than this, then definitely this part which is above the active region and below that active region that will be clipped at the output. So my new curve will be like this. So these parts will be again clipped. It means for a transistor, it is very important first to choose the Q point in center for the amplification so that it will allow maximum signals to pass through it. But again, there is a limit to that. You can't apply any large amount of signal at the input because there is a limit to this. If we apply a large amount of signal or a high amplitude signal at the in input, it is not able to amplify all the signal. It will clip the upper and the negative parts also. So this is the importance of the Q point 